think what's really important is everyone goes on their own journey around from, from a health in general. There's the Western medication, Western support, and that journey that I'm on. And this, you know, at this stage, the reveal that I may or may not need a heart transplant, but that needs to be explored. I've definitely leaned on different practices over the last kind of five years that have really kind of helped me in different ways. So, yeah, I just thought I'd kind of run through a few of the different ones just to give a sense of the breadth of it. So firstly, the British Heart Foundation, they are absolutely fantastic. And by complete chance, a friend of mine from university uh, works in the PR department there. And so as soon as I got diagnosed, I was fortunate I gave him a call. But their general helpline is also absolutely fantastic. And I managed to speak to one of the head nurse who used to be a cardiac nurse. And just to be able to kind of sense check and share how you're feeling and just someone at the end of the phone that understands this condition and what it's like to go through each of these different stages um, is really, really uh, fantastic. And I'll, they've referred me also to different people that I'll share later in the story, people that have been through specific parts of um, my condition, specifically having a defibrillator put in, uh, which was a kind of happened later on. So the British Heart Foundation from, from the general support and information and guys, guidance, I guess they're the main leading UK charity that also does a lot of research around this and for kind of guides and resources and everything. So the second charity I mentioned also at the, the beginning of the video and at the end of each video, which mentions a cardiomyopathy UK. So they have been set up to help people specifically with my variation or cardiomyopathy is the broad umbrella term and then hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is my specific condition. And they do a newsletter, they do specific fundraising, they have support groups. And before COVID, we were meeting up in real life and then online as well, which actually can be more convenient and beneficial for people if they can't make it to the individual events. But that's been an amazing source of support for people also that I've been able to connect with who have had a transplant. And, and so to speak to, I'm going to say the superheroes, the amazing people that have gone through this process and to know coming out the other side and what it entailed and all of these things and to be able to share my anxieties and you know challenges along the way and so absolutely you know fantastic and I'd encourage you anything that you're going through there'll be people around you with something and if there's not then I'd encourage you to create one and to create a group and even if it just starts off as a, a Facebook group where you're putting it out and to connect with people who have something similar to you because again, it's like lessons learned and shared and you don't need to go through this alone. And so that charity has, has been really, really fantastic as well. Beyond the charities, you know, I've mentioned family and friends, but at the same time, you know, I guess being self-aware, not wanting to overburden people. And so I have had therapy. I've worked with various different people um, at different stages where I've kind of felt overwhelmed. It's about chemistry and finding the right person that you feel comfortable with. Uh, but I definitely would encourage that. I've mentioned homeopathy already and my mum being a homeopath, so looking at alternative routes. Again, it's not either or, but it's about how it works alongside and how it, you know, if it makes ultimately a lot is in your mindset as well and how you're feeling like mentally and, you know, your holistic, I guess, approach, I think is also really important to consider. And so I've seen a homeopath over the years. Again, they consider all the other elements and what's going on in terms of kind of potential remedies they might give you. The other thing that I've done is reflexology, uh, which is with your feet. And again, I don't know, I mean, in terms of like energy and how it flows and ultimately your feet are connected with everything. So amazing, actually a girl that I grew up with and went to the parallel school to mine, uh, I was married to a friend of mine, I see kind of every few months. And I just love going to a session, reclining on the chair, doing the feet stuff and she can go oh there's this and I'm on a medication that might impact my thyroid so she was like oh there's this and you know I don't say anything it's kind of it feels quite bizarre but I leave it feeling better and mentally kind of feeling good with it and kind of trust like I'm not saying it's the silver bullet that's going to fix everything but if it's helping my overall well-being and my mental health and well-being as well then that's you know, really great. And also these practitioners, I guess, that are helping you along the journey, like they're each playing their role in terms of kind of supporting me. I also did acupuncture, which I was kind of a bit freaked out about. Initially, needles going everywhere, but also completely zen. I would like go to the sessions, just lie on the table, close my eyes and like be completely zoned out for like an hour and like feel like I'm going to really deep sleep at different stages when I wasn't that well, which we'll talk about kind of later on. 
looking and leaning in to different support. So I did a program a few years ago that was like a personal development program, which was fantastic. And one of the things I said at the end of this program was, do you have the support that you need to do to be the best you can be and to be successful and whatever that means to you? And they said, you know, if that means playing the piano, do you have a piano tutor, for example? And I, it always sat with me as like, whatever I'm up to in life, do I have the support around me? And I would encourage you to ask yourself, you know, that question as well in the broader sense, you know, from I'm now a coach and working with people from a coaching perspective, whether it be therapy or indeed learning a musical instrument, do you have the right support around you to, to help you do what you want to do? And so the other support that, you know, I've had along the way, also osteopathy, which I've also found like super useful and massage as well. And so I think it's just like this general like approach and none of them sound like, you know, suddenly my heart's going to be better and, and fixed, but ultimately they're each like supporting me. And I can see, interesting, the Western medication, the doctors who are amazingly supportive, but there's almost this inevitability about my heart transplant. But when I'm meeting anyone else holistically, there's much more of a, you know, a balance and, and a, a, a broader approach to this. And ultimately, whilst I've got worse in the last five years, I've also got better. And I guess the doctor's view often is, well, that's just the journey that you're on and you'll get better, you'll get worse. And, but deep down, I, part of me will wants to believe and believes. And all I know is how I feel is that I'm doing those things and I feel better. And so I'm going to keep exploring and doing those things. So I'm not sitting here going, I've got the silver bullet and go and do this or from a nutrition. And again, I've spoken from a nutrition perspective, but it's all got to be able to help. And that's, I guess, and also doing yoga. And I look at each of these different things and that I've kind of leaned on that I would really encourage you. Yes, listen to the doctors, take on board what they're going to say, take the medication, do what they're going to do. But there's no reason around that, that that needs to be your tunnel vision. And that's the only way. I also put my head in the sand and felt very overwhelmed at the beginning, being like trying to find you know, a solution. It's, you know, cure for my condition and Google searches and how can you know, it help, which you can go down a rabbit hole. And then I kind of then freaked out being like, okay, I don't want to do anything. Like, I'm just, I'm not going to explore those things because I'm going to set myself up to be disappointed that that's not the fix. And I think for a while I was in that place. But then as I then kind of worked through things, actually just appreciating the fact that there are things that I can do to support me that would be you know, useful and feeling I'll do it for a bit. And if I feel better and I'm enjoying it, carry on. And if not, maybe it served its purpose for that time and that I can then, you know, come back. Thanks for watching. To find out more about the charities that help support those with heart conditions, their families and loved ones, please have a look at the British Heart Foundation, Cardiomyopathy UK and Save Nine Lives. Feel free to comment on the video and subscribe.